So I will begin with a short contextualization and methodology. So um, who is Sofia Torma? Uh, she was a pioneering archaeologist of 19th century uh, Transylvania, about whom very few things uh, were known until uh, two years ago. And she had an important role in the development of prehistoric archaeology in uh, Transylvania. Uh, Transylvania is a uh, historical region in the center of Romania. Uh, and uh, during Zsófia Torma's life, it was part of the Austro-Hungarian um, Empire. So um, uh, in my work, I do not analyze Zsófia Torma's work in the context of Romanian archaeology, but in the context of Hungarian archaeology. Um, why is she important? Because um, um, according to the information that we have today, she is the first woman known to be involved in archaeology on the territory of today's Hungary and Romania. And uh, according to Katarina Rebay Salisbury, uh, also in Austria-Hungary. Uh, so she is the first person who excavated the Neolithic and Copper Age settlement of Turdash Lunga, which is uh, one of the most important archaeological sites in uh, Romania. Uh, you can see that the site is located in uh, southwestern uh, Transylvania, and uh, it is sort of uh, like the Vincha of, of uh, uh, Serbia. Uh, it also has all kinds of uh, legends and uh, funny stories uh, surrounding it. So why is Zsófia Tormo important? Again, because um, due to, uh, her excavations in Tordash Nunca resulted in a large amount of um, uh, finds, which allowed her to create an archaeological collection of more than 10,000 objects. And this uh, uh, collection is still a reference point in um, um, Romanian archaeology today. So my aim is to examine the birth of Sofia Torma's collection, uh, its role in the internationalization of her activity, and the scientific interest that it had raised in the cultural, social, and political context of 19th century Transylvania. Uh, in my research, I've been using uh, sources such as archival documents, 19th and 20th century scientific publications, as well as 19th century Hungarian and German press. And I've been uh, undertaking my research in seven institutions in Hungary and Romania. And you can see them listed here. Uh, these are uh, museums and um, uh, national libraries and um, um, uh, research institutes such as the Hungarian Academ Academy of Sciences. Um, I will uh, shortly present Zsófia Torma's personal and professional background. Uh, so she was born in one of the noble families uh, of Transylvania, the Torma family. Uh, and here in this image you can see uh, the residence of this family. Um, the interest in history and archaeology <laughs> existed within the family. Uh, her father was a historian, a politician, and he also did some excavations. And her brother was a famous archaeologist, Karoj Torma, who was a close collaborator of Theodor Mumsen. Zsófia uh, Torma was educated at home as well as a, in an elite school for girls and she did not have an academic education uh, in archaeology as Hungarian women were first allowed to study in universities in 1895. Uh, after her parents' death, she uh, devoted herself to raising and educating her sister's children. And this is when she develops her interest in paleontology, and she underca undertakes all kinds of local ex expeditions, uh, which result in the creation of a, a small paleontological collection. She never married, she had no children. And uh, after her, sister, he, her sister's children grew up, she moved alone to the town of uh, Orestia, where she was very local, on an, uh, uh, where she was very active on a local level. She was involved in charity acts and all kinds of uh, women's association. Um, in 1876, uh, uh, the Eighth International Congress of Prehistoric Anthropology and Archaeology took place in Budapest. Uh, at the Hungarian National Museum, which was an event of major importance for Hungarian archaeology because it's, it meant its international recognition. And prehistoric uh, archaeology matured as a discipline shortly after Chiap, and before the end of the 19th century, prehistory was taught in two Hungarian universities. 
So during CHIAP, an exhibition was organized at the Hungarian National Museum, which reunited the archaeological materials from uh, public and private collections in uh, Hungary. Uh, Zsófia Torma also participated in this Congress, and uh, this Congress was actually a turning point in her life because it marked the beginning of her archaeological career. Because it is for this event that she started excavating at Turdash Lunka in 1875 and creating her collection. <coughs> and this was also beginning, uh, this moment was also the beginning of her uh, <coughs> correspondence with uh, Flori Schromer. Uh, he, who is considered to be the father of Hungarian archaeology. Uh, he was sort of like her uh, mentor. He advised her on how to excavate. And uh, he was also the secretary of the Congress. And you can see him in the second image. And in the first image, uh, you can see the uh, director of the Hungarian National Museum um, of that time, Ferenc Bulski. Uh, sorry for the Romanian text. I forgot to translate it. Um, Zsófia Torma was the most important exhibitor from Transylvania uh, at this event and she sort of like saved the participation of uh, the Transylvania um, at the Congress because um, uh, this region was poorly represented by other important institutions uh, which only sent materials for one display case. Uh, Zsof, um, Zsófia Torma's collection was exhibited in a huge display case with, this, which, uh, with discoveries from several archaeological uh, sites. After the Congress, at the Congress, Zsófia Torma's collection attracted the attention uh, of participants as well as their curiosity, and she discussed um, uh, and debated over her discoveries with uh, the other uh, scholars. And it is here that she managed to establish valuable, uh, valuable contacts among uh, uh, foreign scholars. And these contacts were the core of her vast scientific correspondence that Zsofia Torma developed after um, the Congress. However, the Congress uh, was also the beginning of her professional conflicts with some Hungarian scholars, uh, such as the um, uh, director of the Hungarian National Museum, Ferenc Pulski, and um, archaeologist, archaeologist uh, Józef Hampel. And uh, this was the beginning of her struggle to gain general recognition in Hungarian archaeology. Uh, she was quite contested because uh, her theories contradicted the nationalist Hungarian narratives and uh, she uh, fueled uh, nationalist Romanian narratives instead. Um, after uh, CHIAP, Zsófia Torma continued to uh, excavate, research, collect, to analyze and interpret the discovered archaeological materials and to develop her own theories. And she began disseminating her researches through various means. Um, and um, in my PowerPoint, you can see several photographs of uh, uh, pottery. And these are photographs that Zsófia Torma took um, uh, uh, of these objects. So which were her means of dissemination? Uh, first of all, she donated a, a large amount of archaeological materials to institutions, scholars, and private collectors from Transylvania, Hungary, and other parts of Europe. Uh, so we have uh, materials uh, in Berlin, uh, uh, Mainz, Oxford, Budapest, I haven't listed here everything, and uh, several other Transylvanian institutions. Um, uh, there is an archaeologist in Hungary who wrote a PhD thesis on uh, uh, the um, uh, artifacts that Zsófia Torma donated to uh, um, uh, Western European institutions. And she managed to identify, uh, to clearly identify uh, more than uh, 1,500 uh, objects from Turdash. And uh, she supposes that um, uh, there are more than 3,000 uh, other unidentified uh, objects in uh, European museums coming from Turdash. Uh, Zsófia Torma also disseminated her uh, research and um, promoted her collection through publications, uh, through participating in important international congresses. It is here that she met famous scholars with whom she uh, mm. established um, um, a lifelong uh, relations. And such congresses are, for example, um, the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Anthropologie, Ethnologie und Urgeschichte, 
Uh, and at these congresses, many times she exhibits parts of her collection. And in Frankfurt in uh, 1882, she is even allowed to hold a presentation, which was a major achievement for a woman at that time. And uh, the most important part of her um, dissemination strategy uh, is her correspondence with uh, scholars, such as archaeologists, anthropologists, geologists, and linguists of her time, with whom she developed a large and strong academic uh, network. Uh, so she corresponded with um, Hungarian scholars, <coughs> with German and Austrian uh, scholars. Uh, you can see a few uh, famous names here, such as Johannes Franke, Matthias Much, Otto Helm, uh, Paul Reinecke, and she even has uh, letters with Heinrich Schliemann because she believed that Turdash is connected with uh, Troy. Um, she also corresponded with uh, British uh, scholars such as Says, Haverfield, and uh, Lubbock. Uh, her academic network facilitated the discussion of archaeological materials, the exchange of opinions, ideas, and latest theories, <coughs> finding of analogies and connections between different geographical regions. Uh, also, the exchange of archaeological objects or copies of these uh, objects, drawings of artifacts, and photographs of artifacts, uh, the exchange of scientific literature, uh, and interdisciplinary research, which Sofia Torma intensely promoted. For, for example, she's among the first uh, archaeologists who sent uh, um, uh, samples for chemical analysis and botanical analysis uh, outside Transylvania. Uh, and uh, I believe that she sort of ha had a marketing strategy in our modern terms. So through, through this marketing strategy, uh, Zsófia Torma, her collection, and the site of Turdash Lunka soon became very famous uh, in the European scientific community. And uh, visiting and studying her collection became indispensable for any researcher interested in the prehistory of Central and Eastern Europe, and not only. She invited, welcomed, and encouraged everyone to study her collection. And some of her uh, more uh, well-known visitors are uh, Albert Voss, Reinecke, and Gilhoff. Um, her um, uh, collections and theories were generally uh, well received by her uh, correspondents who acknowledged the value of her collection, of her discoveries, appreciated her researches and theories, even if uh, didn't always fully agree with them. Uh, and their appreciation is also shown by the fact that they facilitated her access to important congresses and they helped her publish in these society's uh, uh, journals. Many scholars referred to or discussed uh, about her collection discoveries uh, and theories in their own books, such as uh, Virchow. And uh, her first book, there are many letters in which uh, they express uh, and, uh, they, their interest uh, in um, publishing her, in uh, reading her book, Ethnographische Analogien. It is her only book. Uh, they, um, and she published it in uh, 1894, and she worked on it for like five years. And during these years, they sent her letters telling her that they really want this uh, book to be published. Uh, during her final years of life, um, uh, Jofia Thurma struggled to finish and publish the monograph of her archaeological collection called Deisha Before the Roman Conquest, because um, in many letters she describes that she has a feeling that she will die soon, and this is why she wanted to finish as soon as possible her major uh, work, uh, but eventually she didn't manage to do it. Uh, and due to financial problems, she uh, sold her archaeological collection to the Transylvanian Museum Society in 1891. However, the collection remained in her possession until death in order to be extended and further researched. Uh, during her last years of life, she, uh, she uh, was very ill, depressed, uh, and uh, concerned about her financial problems. And she, um, in her diaries, she always describes uh, the, <laughs> her fears of uh, death. And she is the first woman to be awarded with the title of Dr. Honoris Causa by the Franz Josef University in Cluj Napoca, uh, just a few months before her uh, death. Um, so um, after Zofia Torma's death, the, um, uh, her collection was taken over by the Transylvanian <coughs> Museum Society, to which she had previously sold um, her collection. 
Uh, and uh, today, this collection is hosted by the National Museum of the History of Transylvania in Cluj Napoca. Uh, the scientific relevance of her collection was heavily questioned, uh, heavily questioned after her death, partly because of the unclear stratigraphy of the sites where the artifacts came from. Uh, she was also promoting this uh, metric stratigraphy that uh, um, uh, our uh, speaker has explained before. And there were several attempts of organizing her collection and comparing it with the finds and stratigraphic data resulted from later excavation carried out at uh, Tudash. But uh, these attempts have been mostly unsuc unsuc unsuccessful and the collection became a burden uh, for later generations of archaeologists. So, conclusions. Um, Zsófia Tormos collection had an extremely important role in the internationalization of her activity and it is actually, uh, she actually builds a marketing strategy around this uh, collection in order to uh, promote her uh, activity. And uh, I believe that this is a collection which uh, has uh, so many uh, uh, archival documents uh, around that uh, it offers valuable insights into the practices related to collections in uh, 19th century Europe. So thank you for your attention.